Come on, we are live. Okay, there we go. So today, um, eight twenty-eight, and our objective, right? What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about domain and range of a function. Okay. Okay, so it's got to be a function. Remember, if it's not a function, we won't talk about it. Okay. So to be a function, it's got to pass the vertical line test. You can't have two y's on one x, correct? Okay, so say, first of all, find the domain range of the line. So let's graph it. This is easy. So how are you going to graph this? First of all, what kind of line is this? What is this, what is this thing? What is this? What is this? It's linear. It's linear. Who said linear? Who said, anybody, who said linear? Nice. It is linear. Which means it's straight. It's a straight line. Okay. It's a straight line, right? So we're going to start at negative 5. And then I'm going to go, uh-oh, down 2 over 3. Shoot. Well, all right. Maybe I'll put my x-axis up here. Doggone it. Ignore that, okay? Doggone it. I'm already making a mistake. All right. Shoot. Hey, when that happens. Here we go. And I'm even live, huh? Okay, here we go. So it is. All right, let's give a chance to catch up, right? Domain range 828. Domain and range of functions. There we go. Already making a mistake, and I have to admit it online, on the air. So this way it goes. Okay. I don't, I don't want to do that. Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's start at negative 5. Now it's going to fit on my graph, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to go down 2 over 3, right? Everybody agree with that? Wait, down 2? Yeah, because of the negative 2, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll get. Wait, you didn't cross 2? Well, so my slope. So my slope is rise or run. So I go from here, down 2 over 3. Or over three down two, but it's easier to say down two or three. Okay, right? Okay, now. Good, Sydney, you ready? So we go down one, two, three, four, five. Right? There's my y-intercept, and my slope. My slope is down two over three. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, Dad. Yeah, you did it wrong again. Yeah, that's why we're all it's confused. confused. It's, it's on the upper one. You went over three. You're supposed to go over three, right? Oh, no, 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 the line. What? So, your x, no, so, yeah. No, 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 that, no, no, back. So, you're supposed to go down five. to the left two, right? No, you're supposed to go down back two, two over three. Yeah. Over three. Wait! I thought it was just B. So slope is? Slope is x, right? Rise over run. Okay. Now, it's okay. This is a great, this is a great chance. Okay, now watch. And I know we're live. Listen. This is always going to make it. So whenever you think slope, okay, it's like walking upstairs. In fact, you can see the stairs, right? So watch. I'm at the very bottom of the stairs, okay? Right? I'm right, and I got my feet up tight, right? If I go forward first, what's going to happen? Oh. Yeah, so you don't do that. How are you going to go up the stairs? You can lay up first. So you rise, then you run. Does that make sense? See? So you don't forget that, right? So I think, no, feet up against the wall, right? And then you got to pick your foot up first. It's rise and run. So, Cindy, but you can't go up to two because it's snakes. Pick up two because it's snakes. So you go down two. Okay? Thumbs up? So now, what's the domain? How wide is this graph? Wait, hello? Forever, infinite, right? So here's the thing it is infinitely long. That means that every possible x value, every possible x value is on this line, correct? I mean, the number one is on the line, number two, the number three. So every or all possible x values, all every x value, any number you can think of, all possible x values are on this line. So we'll say the domain 
is all real numbers. Real numbers. Now, there's a symbol that makes it nice, and that's the cursive R. And I like the cursive R because it's easy to write, okay? So all real numbers, cursive R, means it's a symbol that says all real numbers. All real numbers because any, any number X will be on this line, correct? Now, what about range? What about range? What about range? How tall is this graph? How tall is this graph? Is it going to keep going? How, how far down does it go? Right, so can any y value, any, give me any number, any y value is also in line, so all of the y values. So we'll say that range is y is equal to all real numbers also. Now, sometimes you'll see f of x equals all real numbers because y and f of x mean the same thing. Sometimes you'll see this, but y and f of x mean the same thing. Okay, thumbs up. Okay. Now, how about number two? What kind of graph is this? Do you remember? A yeah, it's a parabola. Okay, it is a parabola. Now, this one, though, is going to be a frowny face. Oh, yes. why, why is it going to be a frowny face? Because mouth is negative. Because negative. Thank you. So let's go up to four. I'm, yeah, thank you, Zoe. I'm not going to mess up this time, but thank you. <laughs> I'm going to do my best not to mess up. Okay, let's do right there. Perfect. Okay. So let's start up at four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna square my numbers. And square my numbers. What's one squared? So if I go over one. Watch. I want everybody to watch. Every watch. All eyes up here. Watch. If I go over one, what's one? One squared is one, but it's upside down. Now watch. Go back to the vertex. If I go over two, what's two squared? What's two squared? Four. One, two, three, four. See what I'm doing? Go back to your vertex. If I go over one, two, three, what's three squared? Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And of course, I'm going to go off my graph for four. Now, we also know parabolas are symmetrical, right? So I would have a mirrored image here, a mirrored image here, and a mirrored image here. And so there's my parabola. How am I doing? Okay. Now, domain. How wide is this graph? Now remember it's going down, but is it always moving out? It's infinite. Yeah, it's always moving out. Now it's not going to look like it, but it's always moving out, isn't it? Yes. So my domain is x is equal to what? All real numbers. All real numbers. I like the cursive R because it's easier to spell. There you go. Now what about the range? Y is greater. No. Y, y is less, less than, than or the same as four. Y is less than or the same. Y is less than or equal to. Oops. Y is less than or equal to four. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Now, example three. Example three. Now, this is more of a pre-calculus question. Okay. You cannot. You, if x were zero, we're gonna have a problem. If x were zero, we're gonna have a problem. Why? Because then it would be negative. And you can't do that, right? Right, right. But this is, yes, but this is not an imaginary graph, right? No way. Because if it's imaginary, you wouldn't see it, right? Can X be 1? Can X be 1? No. Can X be 2? No. Can X be 3? Yes. So X can be 3. So if I plug in 3, what do I get? 0. Minus 5 is what? Negative So I'm going to make a graph, and I know that part of it is going to look something like this, okay? Okay, make my graph. So we plugged in three, right? And I got one, two, three, four, five, right? You guys agree with that? Okay. So x can be three, right? Can x be four? No. Yes. Okay, x can be four, right? So if I plug in four, four minus three is one. one. Square root of one is? One. One minus five is? Negative 4. So we'd have a point at 4, negative 4, right? Okay. So x can be 5, but then we get a square 6, 7. So negative 3. So here's what the graph looks like. Now watch. You remember what we did here? Remember what we did here? 
Okay, they're, they're opposite. So if I go 1, 1, what if I go 1, 2, 3, 4? It's square root of 4. Square root of 4. Square root of 4. Thank you, 2. So I go up 1, 2. <laughs> okay, so what I did is watch. Square root from my vertex, from my endpoint, I went over 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. Now I could go over 2, but the square root of 2 is an ugly number. Square root of 2 is an ugly number. I can go over 3, but the square root of 3 is not good. But I can go over 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. Now, what's the next number I want to go over? 1, 2, 3, 4. That is... Wait, so the square root of 16 is 2? Square root of 16 is 4. Okay. Yes. Wait, so... Wait, so the square root of 16 is 4. Okay. Yes. Wait, so... Now, it's like, what? What if we're completely confused, right? What if we're completely confused? We cannot get this, right? Worst case, we just go to technology, right? So worst case, like, oh my gosh, I'm so lost. So let's just do this. Let's say I put in the square root. We're not laughing at each other. We're just laughing with each other, right? Of an x minus 3. Subtract 5. Okay, just let's see what my window is. Okay, graph. I'm going to get a better window. Uh, negative 4. Let's make sure we go over to like oh, 10, minimum negative 6. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need more of it. I need more of it. Oh, let's see more of it. Hold on, I keep doing the wrong ones. Hold on, I'm having a. I'm trying to fix this thing. Yeah, I feel like we're going to have more luck just doing that. Okay, you ready? So, <laughs> this is what the graph looks like. Maybe we can miss one problem. Okay, this is what the graph looks like, okay? So, two ways to get it. One is to know what a square root graph looks like, okay? So, here's what a square root graph looks like, okay? We'll do this real quick. So, we did this last year, so it's no big deal if you forgot. But a square root graph looks like this. Okay. Wait, did we do that in algebra too? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. No, that's why we, no, that's okay. why we don't understand. Okay. Now, why is there, you know this answer, Landon, Landon, you know this answer. Why is there no graph over here? You know this answer. Why is there a graph over here? Because there's a solid dot. Um, <laughs> no, you were right the first time, but that's okay. Wait. Okay. Oh, because square roots can be negative. Right. Oh. Right. Oh. Right. Oh. And... <laughs> And if it's a square root, it's got to be the opposite of a square. So the shape should be similar, correct? Yes. So a parabola looks like this, right? Parabola looks like this, correct? Yes. Okay, so let's go through this real quickly, okay? A parabola, 0 squared, 1 squared is 1, right? 2 squared is 1, 4, are you with me? 3 squared is 9, okay? Now, if these graphs are opposites, watch. Square root of zero is zero. zero. Square root of one is one. one. Square root of two is one point four one. Uh, square root of three is one point seven three. Uh, but square root of four is two. two. So what I really graph are these points? That one, that one, that one, and then the next one I'd graph is what? Square root of nine, nine which is what? Three. Okay, am I making oh, sense? Yes, you are actually. So okay, it's good. Like a but yes. 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 Wow. Yes. Okay. So then, if I know what the parent function is, if I know what the parent function is, right, then I can, I'm going to move my parent function. So my parent function was that one, right, and I'm going to move it. So I'm going to move it to the right three. Remember the dance? Which way am I going? Which am I moving? You, it, to you, it appears as if I'm going to the left. But left. I'm really going to the right. It's always the opposite of this side. Okay. And then, so I moved it forward three and down five, and here's my graph. Here's my graph, right? So here is my square graph, but moved down. So then here's the same thing. Watch. So if I move over one, what's the square root of one? No. One. If I move over four, what's the square root of four? If I go over 9 with square root of 9, there's my graph, okay? Does that help? Yes. Okay, now, real quick, what's the domain? Uh, no, 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 no. 
Oh, so x, wait, y is e, y x, is x, x, keep going, Lana, x, x is, is greater than, wait, x is greater than 3. Or equal to or equal 3, equal. yes, because it equals 3, right? Right here, I do have an x value of 3. You guys agree with that? Huh? Okay, so here's the graph. It starts, x is our, right, on that, okay, right? starts here and moves over. It starts at 3. Oh, and it can't, yeah. Right, right. And it does equal 3, doesn't it? It does equal 3. You guys agree? Okay, how about the range? Why is greater than or equal to negative 5? Oh. Uh, okay, well, you should just start answering the question. Nice. <laughs> you'll leave, you're going to let Evan off the hook, aren't you? Thank you. <laughs> um, you guys agree? So you start at a height of negative 5 and go up. Okay. Where are we at? One thumb up. I love that. Okay. Anybody sideways? Sideways okay. Sideways okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. All right. All right. We'll be there tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'll be over. Okay. So then let's turn the page. Okay. So now. All right. Landon, ask Siri a question. Oh, yes. Okay. Ask Siri a question. Okay. Say, so, Siri, what is zero divided by zero? Oh, no. You have no no, I know this. Okay, no, what city hasn't heard this yet? I have a I'll do it. Okay, Siri, what is zero divided by zero? Okay, Allison. Imagine that you have zero cookies and you split them evenly among zero friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies. And you are sad that you have no friends. So you can't, you can't divide by, you can't divide by zero. So even if I take my calculator, okay, okay, if I take my calculator and I do one divided by zero, watch, 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 one divided by zero, it says divide by zero, quit, okay. So let's take a look at this one. Can X be, can X be one? Can X be one? Why not? It's one. Oh, yeah, I get one fourth. One. one fourth. Give me one. Can X be two? two yes, I, I got one fifth. Can X be three? Yes, it what can X not be? It can't be negative three. Zero. Zero. No, it can't be negative three. Negative. What did you say? X cannot be negative. No, we learned this. Yes, you did. Negative three or lower, right? It can be everything. Oh. Everything. It can be everything except. So my domain is x is equal to all real numbers. Because it could be everything, right? Except x cannot equal negative three. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can get through five without hurting your that's, we don't need the domain yet, or I mean the range. That's just the domain. That's because we're going to talk about the, we're going to talk about that later. The range is harder to get, okay? So let's just do the domain. Okay, now, five. Here's the hard one, and then you can do it. Here's the hard one, okay? Okay? First of all, two things. Don't divide by zero. Right? Don't divide by zero. So x cannot equal what? Do we agree? X cannot equal negative two, right? Can it equal three? Yes. Can it equal four? Yes. Can it equal five? Yes. Can it equal zero? Can x equal zero? Yes. No. What? I told you this could be a hard one. Why can't x equal zero? You can't have a negative square root. So this one's got two restrictions. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Two restrictions. One, you can't divide by zero, so it can't equal negative two, okay? And two, it can't be negative. So what I would do is take the bottom, because we know it's always the bottom, it's always the denominator. And I'd say, okay, wait a minute, it can't be, it's got to be positive, and it can't be zero. So I'm going to say, let's just take x squared of x minus two. Let's make sure it's greater than zero. Not equal to, but greater than zero. Now, why did I put that down? I know that if it equals, this equals zero in trouble, correct? Right. So I don't, I don't want to, and also know this has to be bigger than, right? So if I just solve for x, could I solve for x? Can you just solve for x? Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Solve for x. What would you do? Come on. How would you solve for x? Come on, solve for x. Oh, plug in. Square it. Use the square it. Square it. That's right. You do the, do the wrong. So let's square it. Yeah. 
What's 0 squared? So I get x minus 2 is greater than 0. Good. And then what? Wait, where is the 0 coming from? Add 2. Okay, I'll, I'll come back. Add 2, add 2. So here is my domain. That's my domain. Okay, Lana, I'll explain, okay? Let's take a look at the bottom, okay? So on the bottom, there's two things. It can't be 0, yeah. right? So why are we putting this? And we can't have a square root b negative. So this statement here says the bottom has to be bigger than 0. But it can't be 0. It can't be. That's why there's no equal there, right? There's no equal. I oh, okay, agree. I see. There's I see. no equal there. I agree, right? So, so we're saying here's the bottom. i got to make sure the bottom is not equal to 0, but always positive, right? So this statement says make sure the bottom of the denominator is greater than 0. And but you I just solved it, and there's my domain. So think about it. Um, oh, two, my bad. So nobody caught that? I was like, uh, hey, come on, Ben. Nobody caught it. How about two? My bad. I got caught up in, oh. in a question. Two. So think oh, about so it. So zero squared is two? So it can't be two, That's and it's just got to be greater than two, right? No, no, it's not. But what do you mean? Plus two, plus two? two? Yeah, plus two. Can't solve it on that plus side. two, okay. Oh. All right. This is the hard one. So think about my answer. It's got to be greater than two. So three will work, right? right. Four will work. Five will work, right? But anything less than two, we will not put in there, right? And we also won't put in two, because it can't equal two, right? But it can be everything else, okay? All right, now, last one. Wait, hold on, sorry. Can we go back to the last one for a second? At lunch, yes. Let's, let's no, finish no, no, this no. up. Well, I just have a question. So yes. Why didn't we put negative two in instead of zero? Because it x also can't equal negative two. Right, and that statement says it. You're totally right. Yes, this statement says. Okay, actually, that it doesn't matter. We can no, this okay. So yeah, negative two is won't work in, in my statement, right? Okay. How about this one? Evan. There has to be greater than two. Okay. Yes, and I agree with that. I agree with that. And it has to be less than negative 2. I agree with that. What about anything between 2 and negative 2? Uh, oh, uh, oh, wait, never mind. Can it, I mean, so it, you are saying it has to be bigger than 2. It has to be less than 2. And it can be between 2 and negative 2, right? Yeah. So what if we say what it can't be? It can't be 2. Why can't it be 2? Can I be 2? Can I be 2? Think about it. Why can't it be 2? What's 2 squared? And what's 4 minus 4? 0. Okay. So x cannot equal 2, right? What is negative 2 times negative 2? 4. So can x be negative 2? No. X cannot equal negative 2. Can x be 0? Yes. Can x be 1? Yes. Can x be 5? How about 100? Yes. How about a good gazillion? But by the way, there's no such word, right? So no such number. But sure, it could be everything, everything but these two. So what if, if I factor this? I know you haven't seen factoring for a long time. If I factor this, then it's easier to see. Because if x were 2 here, it'd be 0. If x were negative two here, 2 here, it'd be 0. But it could be everything else. So here's my domain. My domain is x is equal to all real numbers except x cannot equal plus or minus 2. Whew, the bell's going to ring in one minute. How do you like that? Sorry, you got homework tonight. I'm so mean.